Hey there, this is Chris Cast, episode 46 of season one. My name's Chris Abraham, and this episode is going to be about uh, what lengths all y'all are willing to go to to ensure that Trump doesn't have a second term. And TLDR... I believe that all y'all are going to go to any, any, or have, or will go to any extreme in order to uh, remove Trump from office. And that's the rub, right? That's the rub. The, uh, the opposition, meaning anybody on Trump's side, is uh, willing to go to any level to assume that this uh, anything is fair game that either side will go to any lengths to uh, either remove Trump or to maintain power. So uh, that includes temporary insanity. That includes um, breaking the law, uh, going to any lengths, uh, finding um, situational alliances, uh, finding situational allies, going above and beyond, taking uh, advantage of um, of access. I don't know. I think that if you're going to do, if, if anything is, if anything is allowable in a, in a time of this sort of quasi cold civil war, I don't think that there are any limitations to what uh, the Democrats would go to and the people behind the Democrats and uh, the people who are just never Trumpers and anti-Trumpers would go to, even if it did break democratic norms, break democracy, and result in extreme, very high-level fraud. I don't think there's any. I, I don't. I think that um, breaking the Constitution in shards, and committing widespread high-end fraud, and even um, manipulating a uh, a pandemic for uh, fun and profits. I don't think that any of those things are out of reach. Um, and we'll talk about it after the break. Here's my caveat. The following information is based on the fact that I love conspiracy theories. I've loved conspiracy theories back since I registered memes.org back in 1998 and ran various and sundry versions of memes and meme space until I sold it last year. So, the following segments are going to be based on my being super curious as to what's really going on, rather than actually gunning for either side. Like, on one hand, I do not think that Trump is the monster everybody made him out to be. I think uh, one thing that I do uh, adopt from the right is this concept of Trump derangement syndrome, because I think everybody went bat poop crazy. Um, and on the other hand, I'm nonplussed by Biden, and uh, I'm pretty proud of Harris being the first executive who's a woman and a person of color and a woman of color uh, and a black woman and an Indian woman, or are we having to say South Asian now? Anyway, all those things. So I don't mind either way. Uh, I just am curious as to see whether or not the left, the Democrats, the progressives, the neoliberals, and the establishment are in hate enough with Trump to do whatever it takes. Like, whatever it takes includes a lot of things. It includes, includes lying and stealing and fraud and murder and and false flags. I mean... When you're willing to do anything 
and you have the force of your conviction as uh, as the wind behind your back, I dare say people are capable of anything. And so that's what I'm exploring in this, just so you don't all don't think I'm playing this us against you, all y'all against me, or believing that I think uh, any of these things are possible or are happening now. But I, I do think people are desperate enough to do anything. So uh, I'm willing to see, I'm interested in seeing what the uh, what the weight is behind the fulcrum in that uh, in that leverage. All right, now that you've been legalized, keep on going. Thank you. Welcome back to episode six, uh, season one of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. I don't know what the wording is, but remember, like, when we're being programmed against uh, Islam uh, over the last 30 years, remember how, uh, you know, once, once, (laughs) uh, once we were at war, you know, with uh, East Asia, now we're at war with the Middle East. Um, so, you know, first it was Russia, then it was North Korea, then it was Middle East and Iran, et cetera, et cetera. That's the, the constant swirl of enemies. So right now, I guess Russia is considered the worst enemy, but during our training against Islam, we were taught that, um, Muslims are very prayerful people, very moral people, very loving family oriented people except during a time of jihad. And during a time of jihad, they can smoke and drink and sleep with prostitutes and watch hookers and they can uh, break uh, all the rules of of the Quran. And all of this is in the name of Allah and it is in the name of winning the war, winning uh, the war for Allah. So... I'm going to just take this theory that uh, in, in, in happy, peaceful times, i.e. times when uh, Barack Obama is in office, it's very simple to follow norms and values, norms and standards, and it's very simple to uh, respect the uh, Constitution and even, even suffer the Second Amendment and free speech and all these other things. But during a time of jihad, when you need to do anything, because, you know, let's talk brass tacks. Um, 76 million Americans, voting Americans, and, and half of the 350 million Americans that America currently has, or the United States currently has, um, a lot of those people don't believe that Trump is the legitimate president. Um, uh, In terms of stress and duress, there hasn't been a moment, a single moment of unity underneath this president as far as the left goes. There there hasn't even been, um, you know, I won't go into my own personal thoughts about 9-11, but, you know, at least after 9-11 happened, voila, a voila, um, everybody was in unison and lockstep underneath George W. Bush, uh, war criminal. So I don't think there's any, I don't, I, I personally do not believe that there's any limitations, any boundaries, uh, that, uh, corporate America, democratic America, liberal America, progressive America, um, and even parts of the United States government bureaucracy that wouldn't go to any lengths um, would literally do the equivalent of um, of uh, what is it called when you uh, they would literally martyr themselves 
in order to uh, in order to end the reign of terror known as uh, Donald Trump. So, if you go ahead and look at democratic behavior and liberal behavior for the last four years, it just seems obvious to me that this isn't a coup from the right. This is a, a, a an attempted coup from the left. Um, you know, who knows? This might have been, uh, considering what I know about America, this very well could have been a, um, a landslide for the Republicans. And, you know, considering how desperate the left has become with regards to uh, both coronavirus. I mean, that was just, that was just on top of it all, right? I mean, it's the equivalent of, of your, uh, child has leukemia, your wife is about to leave you, and then your parents die, right? At some point you just, you just, oh, and you get fired. So at that point, anybody's going to snap. And I believe that, uh, that it's perfectly possible that, you know, you guys all know that I personally do not believe in any of the narrative about uh, Russian intervention. I mean, any more than uh, Israel intervention or Brazilian intervention or UK intervention or Australian or New Zealand intervention or definitely German intervention. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Russia has any more or less intervention than any kind of uh, country that has a second world intelligence community. Um, like I said in my podcast about the fact that I was a teenage Russian uh, troll, I showed you or told you how completely and utterly easy and cheap it was in order to uh, uh, to commit to start to attack hearts and minds online. I mean, it's completely simple. And if you have um, if you have the hearts and minds going on at the higher grounds, such as mainstream media and uh, news, print, publishing, and even if you have uh, the support of, of allied nations, right? So, you know, in no uncertain terms, while uh, Great Britain definitely has its Boris, uh, which is, you know, their, uh, their version of uh, Donald Trump, for whatever reason, they still trust him, even though they think he's incompetent. Um, the you know even the Economist and the Financial Times are down on Trump. Now, I don't think Trump is remotely a good president. I I like some of what he did because he's neither an adventurist nor is he a neoliberal or a neocon. But he is an amazing bellwether as to how healthy our democracy, in fact, is. Um, unfortunately, a healthy democracy apparently is only a fair weather democracy. So everything is fine as long as it doesn't, uh, as long as it doesn't cut against you, uh, cut against us. And, uh, Trump is so embarrassing to everybody, uh, apoplectically so, uh, to the point where they will, they hate, they hate stepdaddy so much that they will literally accuse him of, uh, of, of sexual advances. They will accuse him of, of, uh, sexual abuse, of childhood sexual abuse. They'll accuse him of cheating. They'll accuse him of gambling and drinking and drugs and lying and cheating you know, you just need to get this freaking stepdaddy out of the damn house. You you like mom, but you know mom is pretty stupid and doesn't do stuff for her own uh best in her bo- own best interest. So you just you have to use your superpowers as teenage kid who has an IQ of 160, let's say, uh, and you need to use your superpowers to get him the hell out. No matter what, planting evidence, faking stuff, going, calling social services. Like, there's no extent. Everything is fair game. Because this dude, you know, 
is just not your dad, and your dad is Barack Obama, and he's not your dad, and you want your dad back. So people cry, and they 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 say that they they say plainly, and I believe that they believe them because I believe everything anybody else believes. So I'm not pooping on anybody's belief. People believe that. Trump is the reincarnation of, of Goebbels and of Hitler and of Pol Pot and of Stalin and of Marx and of, which is funny, you know, and um, who else? Saddam Hussein, Assad, um, everybody all lumped up in one. I, I don't remember. Hey, Google, name some African warlords. Pulse.ng. Joshua Blahi. Joshua Blahi or General Butt Naked was once a commander of the forces under the Liberian rebel leader Roosevelt Johnson. Jean Kambanda. Jean Kambanda became prime minister of the caretaker government of Rwanda two days after the assassination of the president, and more. Joseph Kony, Thomas Lubanga, Bosco Ntanganda. Those are the five most brutal and ruthless warlords in Africa. And they have become synonymous with Donald Trump, who very early on, um, uh, Noah, uh, Trevor Noah, uh, made amazing during the, during the elections. Trevor Noah was really funny. And he made amazing comparisons to the pomp, hubris, narcissism, uh, and, um, childlike behaviors of these five African warlords in comparison to the way, uh, you know, in other words, Trump is almost exactly like Gaddafi. Hey, Google, what's the full name of Gaddafi? Muammar Gaddafi's full name was Muammar Muhammad Abu Manyar Gaddafi. Thank you. So, long story short, I do not... You know, because I believe everything and I believe nothing, I'm totally listening to everything that the other side says about uh, grand conspiracies with regards to uh, the computers associated with and the processes with um, the turning around of votes. I'm listening to uh, how um, Philadelphia, Capo, and um, and Costa Nostra uh, were providing hundreds of thousands of of Sharpie, uh, Sharpie dotted president only ballots. I'm listening to all of it. All of it is going to go into my ears. And I think that all of it should go into your ears. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens at the end. Uh, as far as the popular narrative goes right now, um, everybody who believes that possibly this was anything but the most secure. Now, listen, always doubt when someone uses hyperbole. When I use hyperbole on, on Facebook, people call me out all the time. If you're going to call this election the most secure of all elections ever, you should really exert some sort of, of, uh, of, um, of, uh, oh, what is the term? Discernment. I mean, listen, there's no reason for any of all y'all to go ahead and uh, question any of this, because if it turns out right, uh, Trump will not be in office, which is, uh, which is, to many people, the grace of God, uh, a happy world, a better future. Um, but while you're at it, you know, question the narrative of what's going on with coronavirus, too. Just question you know, how many people die every day without coronavirus? You know, I heard this morning that uh, 1,600 people in the UK die every day, uh, every day, 365 days a year before coronavirus. Uh, I can find out how many people die every day without coronavirus from everything, not in apples and oranges man I'm not i'm not comparing coronavirus to only uh only diseases that can be spread person to person i'm talking about any reason dying so you know theoretically 
you are tested for coronavirus, but you just happen to be um, have extreme renal failure and are 85 and are in the ho- have been in the hospital for six weeks, and they test you for uh, coronavirus. Uh, the PCR test is up at 40. Uh, it, you test positive for coronavirus and you die uh, within 29 days later. And that will probably be attributed to being affected by coronavirus. So I'm just saying that uh, you should question these things. And uh, all y'all have not questioned the pandemic, have not questioned COVID, have not questioned the election. But I get it. I get it. Being a rule follow. The only reason a country can work is because people follow rules and people do what they're told. And, you know, if everybody uh, in the entire planet was counterculture, was punk, uh, questioned authority and uh, and was a little bit of a scofflaw, then society wouldn't work. And there are a lot of people who are super proud about what about how uh, how well they follow rules. Um, when you hear people, when you hear Westerners or Southerners or whatever talk about their uh, their freedoms and the rights afforded to them, um, first of all, they believe those rights were given to them by God, and they believe that the Constitution only. Uh, acknowledges those rights and and protects those rights and they also i feel like they um in a world where a type people believe that they're that that their biggest failure is being human and if they could figure out how not to be human whether it's through drugs or whatever listening to motivational tapes, I don't know, if they could figure out how to get rid of the flaw known as their humanity, they'd be amazingly much more successful and happy. But I think that, you know, the crazy deplorables have a more circumspect, is that right? Hey, Google, what does the word circumspect mean? Here's the definition of circumspect, wary and unwilling to take risks. That is exactly the opposite of what I was looking for. Uh, Hey, Google, what's the uh, antonym of circumspect? Here are some antonyms for circumspect, unguarded, incautious. (laughs) Well, incautious, I guess. Uh, Joie de vivre, you know, the the willingness to take risks, the willingness to to, uh, do things... Uh, based on one's own interpretation of what one should and shouldn't should and shouldn't do, um, those those deplorables, as you call them, as are called, are honestly the bellwether. They're the canary in the in the in the in the in the in the coal mine uh, as to whether or not America's America anymore. Uh, that's the rub. I don't think. I don't think the powers that be want America to be America anymore because America is belligerent. America is embarrassing. America has turned into that really, really, really terrible stepdad for to, in order to make this full circle. So I don't know. Probably my life will be better under Biden. Um, I don't want to pull at anybody's, uh, at any threads in anybody's sweaters. I don't want to... Uh, attract the ire of anybody. You know, I'm a perfectly happy, single, 50-year-old, cisgender, white man living in a little apartment in an immigrant part of Northern Virginia, South Arlington, uh, along with my uh, Mongolian posse over here, yo-yo. And I'll say something more after the pause. Welcome back to episode 46. My name's Chris Abraham, season one. Uh, uh, You know, I am not going to feel any effect from this. I am not a person of color. 
Um, I'm considering coming out as queer, but in the loosest definition. I mean, I'm not attracted to men. Um, I have no desire to wear um, anything but black t-shirts and jeans. I do wear funny colored shoes sometimes, and bright colored trainers, and I have an addiction to bags. But, you know, if you ask any of my friends, I'm pretty queer. Um, so I might come out as that, which means I join the LGBTQ plus community. So Biden would be good for me. But as it goes, I guess I identify with being a 50-year-old white cisgender man living in uh, sexy South Arlington in an immigrant building, a little apartment, a uh, bachelor pad, but not a sexy playboy 70s bachelor pad, more of a, of a very sad, sad, sad divorced dad apartment. And um, I didn't really benefit under Trump, and I'm certainly not going to necessarily benefit under Biden. Um, so it doesn't matter either way. I just, I just look like looking in the shadows, and I try to understand, you know, about the crimes against humanity that are constantly perpetrated against the world on our behalf. And then I wonder about the crimes against humanity that will eventually be uh, perpetrated um, in America. And it's not going to look the way you think. It's not, no time in history, um, well, okay. I would say that the people who are deplorables in America are not the people who had the wealth to be slave owners in America 400 years ago. So I dare say that the deplorables of today were poor white trash of yesterday and probably, um, but you know, they might've worked on the cotton fields. And so I'm going to go ahead and say that in the last hundred years, uh, the deplorables have not been, uh, have not been the, uh, rabble rousers in society. You know, they haven't, uh, one could say that when you rule the world, um, you don't have to be the rabble rouser. When you're in control, you don't have to be the defiant upstart. You don't have to be the the activist. Um, but I just don't think they have it in them. So if there's going to be any type of, of revolution in America, it's definitely going to be, uh, like every other revolution in the entire world, it's going to be a, a, a communist revolution, a socialist revolution. It's going to be a Marxist revolution. Um, some of your best revolutions have been uh, your most successful, your most awesome. Um, it's a revolutionary type of thing. I mean, I guess you could say that in, in much the same way, uh, the plundering of of colonial times were not unlike that, and one could say that even the evangelical nature, the the converting pagan babies nature of Christianity, and uh, obviously Islam is also that kind of thing. Uh, but you know, if you are viral in nature, you want to uh, you want to you want to spread. So I think one of the biggest jokes people make about America is how rural and uncurious, incurious. Hey, Google, is it uncurious or incurious? On the website Thesaurus Plus, they say, curious adjective, interested in what is not one's own business. Incurious is an antonym for curious in topics, inquisitive, understanding, very odd. Here's the definition of incurious, of a person or their manner, not eager to know something, lacking curiosity. That is the definition of the jingoistic, xenophobic, deplorables. Um, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to do anything. Very rarely do they have passports and very rarely do they ever uh, travel more than 20 miles from where they're from. I mean, these people are not the ones who uh, do anything. They might yell stuff. They might say inappropriate things, but really they only do it in their home turf. 
Um, and it's pretty easy to white flake them away. All you got to do is like do a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of scare tactic and they can leave forever to somewhere else where they keep close together, close knit. Uh, they're simple folk. I, I dare say they're, they're quite simple folk. And inside of their simpleness, they certainly do like their guns and they do like their trucks and they do like their church and they do like their God. And, uh, God bless them. I mean, I believe the majority of them are faithful, honest, truth loving people to the best of their ability. They try to follow the rules. They get hooked on drugs, maybe. You know, honestly, those communities look down on people who are drug addicts and drug dealers. Not everybody in the opiate crisis is on opiates. And a lot of people are on opiates as a result, uh, not because they're some crazy drug dealer, but because they got hooked on it because they got hurt. Whether that's in high school athletics or or on the job during work. Um I've got so much compassion for those deplorables, and I don't know why you don't either. Ah, oh, you say the most terrible things about them, but, you know, you're on a sugar rush. You're on a hate binge, so I kind of get it. Um, I just hope y'all get over it, because they're not going to ever change. Uh, they're stagnant that way. They don't want to progress. They want to regress. Hey, Google, what's the definition of regress? Here's the definition of regress. Return to a former or less developed state. Can you, uh, hey Google, can you uh, define digress? Here's the definition of digress. Leave the main subject temporarily in speech or writing. Man, my middle name is digression. Anyway, that's done for now. I don't know. Um, I believe that... Uh, that there's that that this is a that uh, uh, in the same way that Trump embarrasses you, the fact that America is filled with um, uh, deplorables is offensive to you too. I mean, really, this is not about anything in so much as wishing that you uh, were born in France and not in America, or born in Germany and not in America. Um, or born in Switzerland and not in America, and maybe even born in England and not in America, you know, because those those countries are so much cooler. But let me tell you, I lived in Berlin, and I lived downtown in Mitte, and right across the street from uh, Berlin Hauptbahnhof, and every time there was a football game, meaning soccer to all y'all, in uh, city center, there were deplorables coming in from the rural areas, dumb, loud, drunk, louts of German provincials. Uh, you go to, I mean, there are so many, all you, when you look at other countries or when you study abroad or get your uh, road scholarship or whatever, all you meet is the creme de la creme. Britain, I lived in Norwich and um, outside of outside of university, uh, they had their own deplorables who pronounced F I L M as film and uh, said honestly. My buddy's dad in in Cardiff said, um, "We might be a little bit Dickensian around here." <laughs> That's not the right voice. Cool, blimey, governor, we'll be a little bit Dick Dick Dickensian around here, bloke. Cool, blimey. Anyway. There are buffoons everywhere. Um, there are drunk Russians. There are uh, drunk Italians. There are uh, drunk Spaniards. There are... Um, I mean, listen. I'm with you. I consider German, French, English, and even Italian culture superior. I, I love... Uh, man, I gotta get out of here. I gotta move back. Uh, but on that note, we will cease for now and go to final words after this message.
Welcome back to episode 46, season one of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and uh, this is the going away time. I'm at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham, LinkedIn.com slash N slash Chris Abraham. I am uh, ChrisAbraham.com on my home site. I am uh, Chris at Abraham.su for email. I, If you want to reach me on WhatsApp or text or call, though I won't answer calls, plus 1-202-352-5051. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr at chris-abraham.com. I don't know what else. Oh, I'm at Chris on No Agenda Social, which is No Agenda Social, which is a Mastodon instance, which is pretty cool. That's noagendasocial.com. Uh, come to me if you want an invite and I will talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, um, I don't know what platform you're using, but please like Subscribe, thumbs up, comment, review, share, and all that fun stuff. If you want to go to uh, anchor.fm slash chrisabraham slash support, you can give me some money so I can continue this moving forward. Talk to you soon. Mahalo, aloha, auf Wiedersehen, tschüss, uh, abiento. Yeah.